I've been living full time in an RV for almost six years. I've made a lot of mistakes. I mean, a lot. <laughs> but last year, I did something really smart. The best decision I ever made living in an RV, off-grid mostly, the way I do. And I'm going to share with you today what that greatest decision was, and the mistakes I made in the beginning, and how I rectified it, and how my life is so much better now that I have finally figured it all out. So stay tuned. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to mind your own. Hey everybody, I'm Carolyn and this is Sadie and this is our RV life. I live mostly off-grid. I travel from national forest to national forest to Bureau of Land Management, desert to another, and I very rarely stay in RV parks. That means I'm often on some really, really bad roads. And I can't believe it took me five years to figure out that I could put all-terrain tires on my RV. I know, I don't know why it took me so long. So last year, you guys might remember, it was quite a debacle. A lot of different issues and I'm going to put uh, video links to those in the video description and at the end of this video so that you can see what I'm talking about. I got ripped off by a repair shop, didn't get the right tires in the beginning, but I ended up with something that I'm really happy with. But there were some mistakes that were made when I got my new tires and I'm going to share that with you at the end, so stay tuned. So what did I do last year that was the best decision, decision I ever made? I got KO2s. So KO2 all-terrain tires. I did some research and I decided that they would be the best for me and the conditions in which I drive. And when I went to the tire shop in Utah, and I'll put the link to that video at the end so you can see who, it, who and where it was. So number one lesson that I learned through that whole debacle last year is to be proactive about my RV auto care. You know, don't go into a shop and entrust the shop that they're going to do good by you, that they're going to do what's best for you. Do your due diligence. Do your research. If you're going to get new tires, know what tires you want put on. Know what size they are. Read the reviews. If you are going to have a new transmission put on, just that's the biggest lesson that I learned so far living in an RV with all the problems that I've had, it's really important that I'm proactive and I do my own research. So I did my own research. I went in but that doesn't mean I was closed off to other ideas. And I went into the shop in Utah and I'm like, hey, I want KO2s and here's why. And he was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But I recommend maybe not putting KO2s on the front for drivability. The KO2s, if you read the reviews, they're known for road noise because of the um, tread on them. They make a lot of noise going down the road. And he said for ha better handling on highway. And that's the challenge of of putting all-terrain tires on my RV, I spend a lot of time on the highway as well. So when this guy who really seemed knowledgeable recommended that I don't put the KO2, the all-terrains on the front uh, because of the drivability of the freeway and stuff like that, I listened and I don't regret it. So we ended up putting these Michelin XPS rib tires on the front. They're radials. So they're, they're highway tires. They're not all-terrain. But the reason he recommended these is because the skeleton of them is made out of steel. So safe for any punctures, any rocks, any, the rocky terrain that I go on, and they do have a really good tread on them. But I'm real rear, rear wheel drive, so it made sense to put the all terrains on the rear where I have the most power and I've got the duels to pull me out of any situation that I might want to get into, but also to have a super tough tire, a highway tire, to reduce noise for better handling on the front for my highway driving, but something super strong that's gonna withstand the conditions that I that I drive in, rocky roads and things like that. So totally very, very happy with the combination of the Michelins on the front and the BFG KO2s on the back. I've got four on the back, all the duels are KO2s. Here's the mistake that was made I, I, unfortunately, by that tire shop that I ranted and raved about that I loved so much, and I'm not sure if it was an oversight, uh, I'm not sure what happened. They put in cheap, and, and my friend Richard, you see him in comments a lot, uh, sent me some emails that they might have been like these pop-in valve stems. 
I don't know if they were the easy pop-in valve stems or if they were just cheap plastic valve stems, but I continued to have problems with the valve stems on these tires. The tires have been great, but I kept losing air. <laughs> I mean, what the actual hell? Ending up with flats, ending up with really low tires. And Hear that? No bueno. And eventually I replaced all the valve stems. I kept going in and they'd repair a valve stem, then it would break again. Finally, somewhere in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, can't remember where that was, I'll put the video at the end and in the video description so you can see where that was. I went in after the help of Richard and other viewers and my own research, I was like, yeah, I think that's the issue. The stupid cheap plastic valve stems keep breaking. And so I had all of my valve stems replaced with metal. Another thing, the valve stem extenders, they suck. Don't Oh, that's what it was. Initially, I thought it was the valve stem extenders that I was having the problems with. I thought they were causing all the leaks. I thought I just heard. I just moved. This one does have an extender on it, still a metal extender. thought I heard it hissing. That's what I thought the problem was first. And, and then we realized, no, it wasn't the extensions. It was the actual valve stems. And I've never, no matter the solid metal valve stems, the braided valve stems, uh, extensions. I have never had luck with any of them. They they pop the valve stems. They cause them to to um, fold and bend and cause leaks. And then they themselves cause, they're terrible. So unfortunately, I don't have any valve stem extensions on the rear or the well. I guess they still have them in the front, but on the rear at all, which is really sucky because I can't check my tire pressure without taking off the dual which really sucks without taking off the outside tire but number that's number one tip I uh, just forget about the valve stem extensions they suck they cause problems the last thing you need is to find out too late when you're in the middle of nowhere that they're leaking and you wake up to a flat tire and the second tip is no matter what tires whether you're going to be putting all-terrain tires on your RV or regular highway tires you need metal valve stems just get metal valve stems just ask for them and if they and before you take it in you might want to call and say hey i'm coming in to new, get new tires do you have metal valve stems because that's what i want that's what i need and they can either order them for you to make sure they have them when you take your car your your vehicle in your rv or whatever or you can buy them yourself and take them in and say yeah you know when you change the tires use these so that's what i've learned that are that is my tip for you if you're going to be live even if you're living in a class c or a class a rv and you're going off road as much as i do as much as i do i gotta tell you these tires have gotten me out of mud mud puddles clay mud sand that i know without a doubt in the past i would have gotten stuck in so these have really changed my life they really have they've given me a level of comfort a level of safety a level of confidence when i'm going off road on these crazy roads that i'm not gonna get stuck and it's just been really really nice so if you're going to be living in an rv the way i do highly recommend all all-terrain tires I did also drive in a little bit of snow and a little bit of icing conditions. They are not known for handling well in the snow. So if you're going to be in a lot of snow, then maybe these aren't the tires for you. But for the little bit that I have done so far, they have been fine. All right, there you have it. Another tip from my experience of living on the road as long as I have. And this time it was a happy tip. It wasn't a cautionary tale tip. Well, it kind of sort of was. They all are. I always say that... I learn everything by the process of elimination. I do everything wrong first until I get to the right thing. And I'm here to prevent you from doing that as well. So I hope you found that helpful and enjoyable. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here and watching my videos, giving my videos a thumbs up, subscribing, 
liking, sharing, all the wonderful things you do to keep this channel alive. Make sure you're still subscribed to my channel. YouTube has a habit of just mysteriously unsubscribing people, so go check right now. Make sure you're still subscribed so you never miss a thing. And I'll see you Sunday night, if not before. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I will see you soon.